Good morning everyone and it's I'm um, delighted to be here. Bonjour Monaco. I'm sorry that I can only be here in video version but I'm very thankful to the district organizers for inviting me to give this uh, video intervention keynote speech. So my name is Adam Simon from Context. Uh, we are long-term partners of DISTRI and today my topic is the distribution channel retrospective of 2019 and looking forward to the next decade. I've also called it the power of partnership, the power of channel partnership, because DISTRI is an event which brings together vendors, distributors and retailers and shows the power of people coming together to bring products to market. And I'm going to show you from a data perspective what this looks like in 2019 and also give a vision of 2020. These are the three areas that I will be focusing on. The results of the channel for 2019, a reseller perspective based on our data research and also guidance for 2020 and trends for the next decade. Context this year celebrated 37 years of channel sales and price tracking. Many of you know us. For those of you who don't, we have the panel which is the channel data reference for Europe. We have over 150 distributors in our panel from across Europe, the largest such database in the world, and we track all elements of the channel from vendors through distributors and also end user as well. And the data today is going to be presented based on this input that we have. To start off with the channel overview 2019, it's very difficult to make predictions, but one of the people who had a go is this comedian, so I just thought I'd let you hear him to start off with. When I was in my 20s, I changed careers from computer engineer to stand-up comedian. It was the 1980s and I decided I'm a visionary, I could see the future, this whole computer thing is going nowhere. <laughs> so the PC going nowhere. This is not at all what has happened in 2019. In fact, I would call 2019 the year of Windows 10. It has given an enormous boost to the channel We've seen a lot of growth in the desktop computing and the mobile computing categories and all resellers who are sitting there in the audience today will know that they have benefited and not just PCs but also displays have seen a great growth and there's many other accessories which can sit on the back of this very important migration which has taken place in 2020. The channel grew 3.3% year on year in 2019. So that's a very solid growth. You, what you can see is that the desktop computing uh, area grew by 10.7%, that mobile computing grew by 4.1% and the other categories by 2.7%. So there are also many, many categories that are in the new type of technology which have grown at much higher percentages things like smart home and wearables and all those other areas which we'll come on to later on. Uh, telecoms has slowed down a lot this year uh, compared to previous year. Previous year in 2018 telecoms was the star of the channel and in 2019 this slowed down considerably and there's one main reason for that which is the slowdown of sales in Huawei phones through the channel. Uh, there are other areas which are not so positive. If you sell printing consumables, you will see that the printing consumables have gone down again this year as they did in previous years. Uh, not a very positive area and also some of the enterprise categories just such as servers and storage didn't have a very good second half year. But overall the channel had a good solid year of growth and as I said really powered by what was going on with the Windows 10 migration. Here you get a perspective of which are the biggest vendors that sell through the channel. The top one is Apple, as you can see over 11 billion came through the channel in 2019. This is phones, it's 
ear pods, it's PCs, and it's all those other products that you love to sell. Uh, HP is, comes in second uh, with 9.3 billion sales through the channel. If you then go down the list, you see that there are a few other highlights. You can see that Xiaomi, a Chinese vendor, has come into the top 20. Last year it was in the 41st position. It moved into the last quarter at 20th and now it's at 17 in our channel numbers. Uh, it's interesting to note that although Intel has lost market share because of the shortage of uh, silicon chips, it has managed to maintain its revenues through the channel. And there's one that is missing off of this list here, which is AMD, the main beneficiary of this shortage, and is now 106% uh, up year on year. I'm now going to move into uh, the reseller perspective, uh, which we have data on as well, and which will hopefully give you some real understanding of how the world is seen in the perspective of resellers. We do a survey every year and this year we had 6,500 resellers who responded to us. We also have data from uh, the sales to resellers which enable us to understand how many resellers are selling and how they're actually doing. One of the notable things that came out from our Channel Watch survey in 2019 was just how much more positive the resellers are in Europe than they were 12 months ago. So our survey was done at around about June 2019 and compares to the previous year. And what you can see is that two countries particularly show a big increase in optimism. They're Germany and the UK. Germany facing the potential of recession, which was narrowly avoided in November. Um, UK facing Brexit. And so why would we think that the resellers would be so positive at this time? Our answer to that is that the underlying trends in the IT industry are positive. So there is a lot going on. The traditional side, Windows 10, and the growth of other categories as well. But also, uh, the digital transformation revolution which is taking place is giving a lot of work to our resellers. They are moving into services which they're adding onto their hardware and this is really powering their expectations. So despite maybe some gloomy economic forecasts, they are feeling positive. And you can see that countries like Italy has also gone up uh, in uh, positive sentiment. Uh, Spain has maintained very high, uh, Portugal has maintained very high, and South Africa, which we measured for the first time this year, is the highest in terms of reseller optimism. We ask resellers which areas they're going to invest in in 2020, the coming year. And what you can see is that the same trend is, a, is evident here as we've seen in the last few years. There are some traditional channel product sectors which resellers are continuing to invest in. PCs, software, hard disks, components and printers. But also you can see that there's a big move into the new categories such as accessories, smart home, headsets, wearables and even 3D printing where 10% of the resellers we surveyed said that they were going to be investing in the next 12 months. Overall, when we measure the number of resellers in the market, we can say that the reseller market in Europe is stable. We compare year on year and can see that the number of resellers increased by 2.7% from 119,000 to 122,000. That is a very good sign of health. There is a lot of exits from the market. There are a lot of entries into the market. But net, overall, the reseller market is positive and is growing. So if we look at the telecoms market, we can see that there has been a reduction in telecoms resellers across Europe, a 4% reduction. And the total number has gone down from 26,000 to 25,000. There is great rationality in this because resellers will sell the products that are available and where they can make money. 
But what is positive is that in fact the average purchases per reseller have gone up in all countries except Belgium. So it's still good news for people selling telecoms in Europe. If we move on to a really nice emerging market which is smart home which Context has been tracking for the last few years you can see that the number of resellers coming into the market has gone up by 7.1%. Again, people coming in because of the opportunity. What is also very encouraging is that the average purchases per reseller have gone up by 60%, 344% in Italy and 129% in Spain. Why is that? It's because particularly of voice control automation products such as Google Home and Amazon Echo which have been going through the channel so successfully. So not only are there more resellers coming into this market but they're also being able to sell considerably more product. I'm going to end off this keynote with some guidance for 2020 and a view of the next decade. It's important to stand back and to think to ourselves as we end this year, where are we going? And also because it's the start of a decade, where are we going for the next 10 years? Um, so what we've done is that we got our analysts together to look at the recent history in the channel and to project forwards. And this is our response. So we gave guidance last year of three to 6% growth in the channel uh, and we came within that guidance, we actually saw 3.3% growth, as I said right at the beginning. Uh, we were tracking really well in the year, uh, so that at the end of Q3, we were seeing 4.5% growth year on year. But in fact, we had a poor Q4 of only 0.5% growth, which actually brought the year down to this 3.3% level. Our guidance for the next year is 1 to 3% growth. Some countries such as Italy and Spain and Poland we will expect to grow at higher rates. UK and Germany are both critical for the overall panel and we will watch to see the type of growth rates which they make. And this is how we break down the growth. We have come in with an estimate of 2% growth in mobile and desktop computing compared to 4% uh, no, 5.5% last year. Uh, we think that the Windows 10 uh, upgrade will still impact the channel positively in the first half of the year, but this will slow down in the second half of the year. We see a turnaround in enterprise and that there will be an increase in year-on-year -year sales and infrastructure and security, particularly in the second half. In the telecoms, we've given a pretty cautious growth rate of 1%, in the telecoms area. This could be an upside for 2020. Printing and consumables we think is going to continue uh, with a reduction in the next year compared to this year's performance. Services we think uh, we've been quite cautious there and that there's definitely upside. We've forecast on the basis of this year's final outturn but uh, resellers and distributors are investing so much money into services that we think we could see some big growth in this area. Uh, displays, a slowdown again related to Windows 10. Um, AV systems have been a really strong area of growth in the last uh, year and we see that growth carrying on. And lastly, the other category which grew 8.5%, which includes things like smart home, wearables, and many of the new emerging categories we see continuing to grow. It just shows the importance of coming to shows like Distri and being aware of new products when you're actually uh, looking for ways to grow. New products and new categories. So we now move to look in the final bit at our forecast for the next decade. But before we do that, let's just have a quick lightning tour of five elements that we think are important about the last decade. The first is the channel is amazingly resilient. You know, people have been predicting the demise of the channel for years, but the channel reinvents itself. And we've seen that in the last 10 years. And particularly we've seen that with the invention of new services, which they're providing to their end customers, and increases in profitability, which they've been able to gain as a result of that. 
The second is the cloud, of course, the shift from hardware to software and distis and resellers finding their place in this new ecosystem, sometimes challenged. There are some born in the cloud distributors who are there who are offering services. All they know about is how to provide services through the cloud. Some of the more traditional distributors are having to adapt quickly to keep up with them. As far as CX or customer experience is concerned, the customer portal has taken center stage. Businesses and consumers expect ease of business to be able to be done both in their consumer experience and also in their business experience. More and more resellers are expecting their distributors to provide that type of facility in terms of systems and access. Last decade was a time of enormous promise of new technology and I have to say some disappointment. If you think about it, there's been a lot of hype about smart home, about wearables, about drones, about artificial intelligence and it hasn't necessarily all come through to the channel as people hoped it would and some of those eye-watering forecasts which we've seen have not actually come to be. But let's think about the next decade in a minute. And then the last thing is the rise of e-commerce, the inexorable rise of e-commerce. Even countries where e-commerce was not penetrating early on in the decade, countries like Italy and Spain have seen enormous changes in the way that things are actually happening there. So now let's look at the next decade, the 2020s. Well, we've got another five elements that we want to share with you all today. The first is that we see continued, continued channel resilience. And this is going to come through services and particularly through the development of intellectual property. Intellectual property means things like training, software development and database development. And at the moment when we survey uh, resellers across Europe, 20% of them say that they have developed their own IP and for many of them this represents 25 to 50% of their revenues. But we see that as an absolute core of the resilience and resellers and distributors need to look at how to develop those services and intellectual property. The second is we're going to see cloud and as a service growing to the point where it's going to be almost everything is on the cloud. There will be some things which remain on premise. It will be mainly for regulatory purposes or for edge computing, but we see an inexorable increase in the presence of the cloud in the next decade. In terms of customer experience, we think it's going to go from a demand and expectation of a very easy interface through to interoperable types of functionality. So everything needs to work together. And that's what the customer will expect. And we think by the end of the decade, we're going to see that actually happening. And boy, is that going to be exciting for some of the categories that we watch, such as smart home, when we see that interoperability happen. In terms of new technology, it won't surprise you that our list includes 5G, which is a very important element of growth, electric cars, smart home, IoT and AI. But let's just make one point. The smartphone we think is going to remain core in the next decade. You know, it is an amazingly adaptable piece of technology and in the next few years, just watch out for how important it is becoming in terms of monitoring people's health and the new applications that are coming out uh, in the smartphone. So we think the smartphone will stay very important in the next 10 years. And lastly, I leave you with a question mark about e-commerce. We've seen it rise in the consumer world to very high percentages, as high as 50% in technology in the UK goes through uh, e-commerce. But the question is, will it achieve its presence in B2B? Amazon are trying at the moment to make a presence in B2B in Europe. Uh, Newegg, who I know are present at Distri, are also doing the same. You need to have service that you can provide to the end customer in order to be able to achieve this. And so we leave that as a bit of a question mark and think that there's going to be a real fight in the next 10 years between the channel and e-commerce in order to um, maintain presence in that market. 
So that concludes uh, my keynote presentation to you today. Once again, I thank Distri for inviting us to be here and uh, giving you this video intervention. Uh, if you want any more information about our data or about this presentation, please contact me. My details are there and they are on the stand at Distri, which although we're not there present, uh, you can actually get the details all from the Distri organizers. And I wish you all an excellent uh, gala evening and conference tonight. I'll miss you all.